Welcome to today's Global Connections program. I'm Bill Miller. Global Connections Television is a privately funded, independently produced program. The opinions expressed on Global Connections are solely those of the moderator and his guest. We'd invite our viewers to go to our website at www.globalconnectionstelevision.com to view previous programs. Also, if you're involved with any type of a PBS or community access television station, or perhaps uh, an educational institution that has an intra-campus television hookup, or you just have a website and you like our shows and would like to share them, please feel free to do so. Global Connections Television is provided at no charge as a public service to help us better understand international issues and how they impact our lives. Today we're going to be focusing on the Korean Peninsula. This is an extremely dangerous area of the world, and it's one that uh, I think right behind climate change, perhaps the Iranian nuclear deal, the Korean Peninsula is the second or certainly the third largest challenge confronting the United Nations and policymakers around the world. Today we're going to listen to an expert who is from South Korea and knows a lot about the issues and has written a book on them. My guest today is Dr. Kwang Saw. Dr. Saw, a South Korean national, is a distinguished senior scholar and professor of political science and criminal justice, as well as the director of Asian studies at Campbellsville University in Campbellsville, Kentucky, USA. Dr. Kwang Saw, welcome to today's Global Connections program. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being with me today. We've got, in a matter of 24 minutes, we're going to resolve the problems on the, on the Korean Peninsula. We will, we will take care of them. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about Korea. We hear about North Korea, South Korea. The uh, North Korea is about 48,000 square miles in size, and South Korea is about 37,000 uh, square miles in size. How large is each of them population-wise? How many people live in North Korea and in South Korea? Well, by this time, as you know, uh, through you know internet, you know the population is North Korean is uh, only uh, 25 million, and South Korean is almost 52 million. Uh, half of uh, number of people more than you know North Korea by this time. Mm -hmm. And there's a there's a, quite a difference in population. Also there's quite a difference in the income to the economic viability. I think the uh, I, I just googled this that the South Koreans have a thirty two thousand dollar per capita income roughly and North Korea has like one thousand nine hundred eighty which is a huge chasm uh, between the two countries. Obviously the North is much poorer financially than the South. Well, even if uh, uh, whatever you got, that, that information is more than less, less than that. You know, North Korea is really uh, oh, more, is it? more or less than, you know, whatever they show up, you know, that, you know, uh, calculated. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, so it, <laughs> the financial situation is bleaker than we thought. Uh, sure, very much, yeah, uh, very so, much. Yeah. Well, very good. Well, let's talk a little bit, uh, just very briefly, about the Korean conflict. It was from 1950 until 1953, and of course it was under the United Nations command that the, there was actually a military operation in Korea. How did, how did the United Nations become involved in this? How did the UN Security Council get involved in trying to bring peace to the peninsula? Yeah, uh, since 19... to until 1945, uh, Japanese government occupied for Korean uh, government. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are lucky uh, to, uh, after Hiroshima bomb happened, we are automatic uh, independent from uh, Japan. It was 1945. Since after 1945, South North Korean people until set up to, for their government, they're going to be helping for uh, that country, so involved with the Soviet Union, by this time in Russia, uh, Soviet Union and USA uh, involved with the, until they set it up to uh, moving by themselves in you know, a Korean uh, people 
Unfortunately, uh, the Soviet Union not much cooperate with the USA what they want to. So that's why reason eventually that UN uh, involved for that stop mm -hmm. uh, end up 1948, I'm sure 1948, they starting uh, South Korean uh, by themselves to uh, under USA you know, uh, control for the uh, uh, we name called the trusteeship government mm -hmm. by the uh, USA, South Korea. And the North part Korea was, it wasn't to say you know, South Korea, North Korea at the time, North part uh, Korea, South mm -hmm. part Korea. So South part Korea, uh, they uh, uh, by themselves, the uh, for, uh, elected uh, President uh, Seung Man Ri, and then follow up, that was uh, May 10th. And then uh, uh, 1948, uh, August 15th, that officially opened uh, South Korea, that Republic of Korea government. Mm -hmm. And then follow mm -hmm. up North part Korea, that Kim Il-sung uh, to be uh, their Oops. North the part leader. The first leader. leader of North Korea, Kim Il-sung. Yes, Il that was uh, September 9th. Mm -hmm. So they call Democratic Republic peoples of mm -hmm. Korea. So mm -hmm. that's okay. why reason to, they starting divided to exactly. that time. But uh, since after that, uh, built both sides, we can say, you know, North Part is a, a, a communist people, and then South Part, we can say, you know, a, a Democrats people uh, mm -hmm. bit together. Uh, Unfortunately, we know uh, 1950, June 25th, in the morning, they uh, uh, North Korean attacked to South Korea. They starting name called you know Korean War. Exactly, and when we think back, the the United Nations. We're talking uh, just for a moment. We we'll, won't spend the show on that, but the, uh, the UN was set up in 1945. In 1950, they were debating this issue, and peacekeeping was not in the United Nations Charter. But all of a sudden, you had the, after the UN created Israel and Palestine in 1947, then the war in 1948, the UN was involved in setting up peacekeeping, a peacekeeping mission. Then you had the Korea in 1950, and when we think back and look at our history books, we see where the Soviet Union, which was one of the five permanent members of the UN Security Council and could veto a resolution that came before the Security Council, when they were debating what to do in Korea after North Korea invaded the South, the Soviets became very irritated and marched out, stormed out of a UN Security Council meeting and of course, then they moved forward without the Soviet Union who couldn't veto that resolution. So uh, Soviets uh, and now Russia have never walked out of a, of a UN Security Council meeting since it. But the, the thing is though, we saw that it was a very bloody conflict. It went from 1950 to 1953. The, under the United Nations command, there were uh, I think 16 countries providing combat troops, the United States was the lead country, but you had other countries, the Philippines were involved, and then you had like three countries that were providing humanitarian assistance like Norway, uh, Sweden, and some of those countries. But we're all, we are where we are today, and it, it is so important that we resolve this issue. How, how dangerous is the peninsula right now? Is it, we often hear it's the most heavily armed area in the world. Is that correct? Yes, you know more than me about you know, no. Korean history. <laughs> I just moved uh, us from 50 up to today. Yes, the, uh, <laughs> uh, whatever you said now, that is very truth. Uh, Soviet Union uh, not much cooperate for you know, USA, what they want to. Uh, including uh, the uh, for UN what they want to. Uh, uh, one of the sample is during the Korean War, the uh, 1950, uh, 
MacArthur uh, to be in a, uh, in a south part for you know a commander at the time. Not uh, oh, just, General Douglas MacArthur. Yeah, Ge Ge okay. General Douglas MacArthur. At the mm -hmm. time, even if uh, Soviet Union do not want to accept, it, that's why reason to uh, happen like that continue up to today. Mm -hmm. uh, Yes, very uh, uh, dangerous situation we have more than as much as before. Before, uh, if it happened for war, just like, uh, you know, uh, they don't have you know, nuclear bombs. But by mm -hmm. this time, we have uh, the nuclear bombs is here. So uh, it's more dangerous than, you know, before, uh, you know, uh, 1950s, you know, at the time. That's what I think. Mm -hmm that way. Exactly. And uh, I, I, a few years, well, about 10 or 12 years ago, I had an opportunity to go up to the 38th parallel. And of course, the Koreas are divided between the, th the north and the north and the south and the south on the 38th parallel. And when you leave Seoul, the capital of South Korea, you're only about, I guess, 25 miles or so from the from the 38th parallel. But Pyongyang, the capital of North Korea, is only probably 70 or 80 miles right. north of the 38th parallel. But as you're riding along, it's very peaceful, beautiful countryside, nice people. And then all of a sudden you see machine gun turrets in the side of the hills. You see spikes in the road that can come up to stop, hopefully, stop North Korean troops that are mobilizing to come south. But it is a very moving experience. It's still the United Nations command, but the the U.S. is really the key country, uh, along with South Korea, that operate that particular uh, entity at the 30th parallel. But it, it, it's a very moving experience and one that a person will never forget if, if you visited it. That thing's also, you know more than me. <laughs> 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 the, uh, that's true. The, uh, uh, during the Korean War, 1950 to 1953, uh, until you know uh, uh, July 27th uh, uh, stopped the war that uh, continuing uh, that McCarter General McCarter wanted to be until get the uh, uh, Pyongyang only left over to uh, North Korea only 25 miles left over mm -hmm. at that time uh, President Truman make him to stop, and he fired him to uh, not mm -hmm. anymore attack to uh, uh, North Korea because uh, uh, Trump, no, not Trump, I'm sorry, that uh, President uh, side worry about it, involved for Chinese soldier to helping for North Korea. Mm -hmm. So he worried about that, do not want to any more involved for that with the uh, Chinese you know, uh, government. And also at that time, uh, uh, South Korea plus uh, that Chiang Kai se get out from uh, China. Uh, so MacArthur asked, uh, why not we call for Taiwanese 50,000 soldiers to Mm -hmm. make them to involved to to helping for South Korean war but it wasn't to turn out a good result mm -hmm. that's why back to 38 parallel that's what's happening exactly and so we're at the 38th parallel today now you you've been you have given this issue a lot of thought you've written a book the unification of the Korean peninsula and you have four different measures that we're going to talk about. Uh, one, right at the very beginning in your book, you say that it's, we need to look beyond just politics and politicians to solve this problem. Uh, well, let's, let's talk, we'll talk about your measures first and then come back and talk about who will make a decision at some point. But uh, the, in the book, the first uh, suggestion you have is to open worldwide cultural missions. What what exactly is this proposal, and how would you do it? As we know, in the world, people, special for for Pacific country, 
including Japan, China, Russia, and USA, past 70 years, they only talking about their benefit, not thinking about really people who lives in North Korea, who lives in South Korea, how much the North Koreans support their life. They don't have a, a, even for no human rights. That's why I'm talking about we are not anymore depending on politics. We need to, world people have to understand South North Korean system. There are people, why happen, why living here now like that? So I want to be open cultural exchange program to make them to show, make them means the North Korean people have to see new world. This is a democratic country, world the people, what they living, they never seen. They just like a pond people. So mm -hmm. wanted to open for them to show all over the world to mm -hmm. make them to educate it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk about the democracy. I don't want to talk about the uh, communist. I'm talking about the human life. What is the real human life? What is the really rich life? What is the real freedom life? Mm -hmm. That is only education exchange for North Korean. That's why I wanted to open culture. Cultural missions and centers. Exactly. So you would have delegations from many countries coming to South Korea, North Korea, South Koreans, North Koreans going to these countries to promote a dialogue, an exchange of ideas, to learn from one another, and to better understand the situation. Exactly, exactly. That's what I have a plan to uh, present time past uh, 20 years. I recruiting lots of students from South Korea, Japan, China, Taiwan, mm -hmm. and, and even if uh, Russian students. Uh, when I see that, except North Koreans still block out. That's why I want it to be every year Mm -hmm. For the future, at least 300 North Korean students, uh, including in Japan, that uh, Korean refugee students also wanted to recruit to show the world what it looks like. Mm -hmm. That's my plan for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the second suggestion is to have the United Nations expand its economic and humanitarian assistance. Right now, the UN does have humanitarian assistance, especially as far as food supplies and that type of thing to the North Korean people because of the poverty and the, the lack of food that they have. Uh, why is this important and how would that work? Well, they're really poor. Mm -hmm. Cannot figure out what is the poor. We don't know. Actually, special American people, they are uh, spoiled when I see. They never know what is uh, hungry, real hungry means. They don't know what is uh, real, no freedom. Because they are pretty much, uh, except that, you know, rich country today living this society, they don't know what is really poor. North Koreans is really poor. You might sing for even for I just embarrassed to talk to you know on television, but how poor they even if they're digging for you know garbage you can to eating food, mm -hmm. even if this morning I saw you know it through the internet. The cow, after poop, they're digging from there the piece of a corn. Mm -hmm. 
take it out to eating. From a cow dropping, cow that, manure. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is very yeah, true. That, yes. that that much is just a poor. So, where the people need to supporting for them food is more important than freedom, more important than democracy or communist. Mm -hmm. That innocent 25 million North Koreans is just like this, except mm -hmm. that politics people, including for Kim Jong-un and their party. Mm -hmm. Now, another proposal you have is to move the 2028 Summer Games, the Olympics, to Pyongyang, the capital of North Korea. Right. What would that do? Now, right. that's, uh, that's, that's several years from now, so what, but right. why is that important? Right, uh, that's why my plan is so open for cultural mission, plus that's why I'm in contact with uh, uh, food company in Michigan wanted to be a uh, uh, word some business people put them in Pyongyang to their factory to make them to work for living not just begging to word people to supporting for them to food instead of make them to work for a living That's why reason 2028, what if held Summer Olympic in Pyongyang, naturally we can see North Koreans as how poor, and also because of this matter, Olympic means make a peaceful in the world, mm -hmm. right? So that's why I'm starting for campaign for 2020. Uh, Never uh, too early to in start. Pyongyang. Yeah, <laughs> start but, early. Yeah, at the time, yes. uh, when I even for five years ago, when I uh, uh, publishing that book, many people talking to me, Dr. So, don't say that. People think about you as crazy. What do you mean, you know, crazy? So how can you talk about the 2028, uh, you know, uh, held by the uh, Pyongyang Summer Olympic? Well, that is my plan. Uh, that is the only way we can help him for North Korea to be, make them to, for a living. And so we need to move forward in that area. Yes. Now, uh, by the way, uh -huh. I have a good chance to uh, 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 strongly campaign a 2020 uh, Summer Olympic in uh, Tokyo, right? Mm. 2020, two years later. So I'm going to be strongly in a, a campaign for 2028 Summer Olympic in Pyongyang. Mm -hmm. Well, Seoul has been very involved in many of the Olympics. What we just saw in uh, Chong, um, Pyeongchang, the Winter Olympics that were held in Pyeongchang Ye in South Korea. Yes, yes. That, is, yes that is a good question. Uh, Believe it or not, my grown hometown is uh, after I escaped from North Korea to South Korea, I living for the names of Dunne. Dunne and Pyeongchang is only uh, 15 or 20 miles. So I used to, when I go to Seoul, per day spending to get to Seoul. But now only one hour, 27 minutes can get the Dunne to in Pyeongchang. Mm -hmm. They put the bullet uh, train system. This Winter Olympic was very important for bring up North and South Korean today. Reason why, when I before open before open for Pyeongchang Olympic, Winter Olympic, I suggestion to Korean government, why not when you put the uh, uh, Winter Olympic, the Winter Olympic, you know, maybe better than me, I don't know, but I do know very well about that Olympic.
they have to have a, at least a seven or eight venue mm -hmm. they need it. That between venues have to 50 miles. So I said, talk to Korean government to, that at that time, friend of mine was the president of Korea, DJ Kim, asked them to have to open one venue, at least North Korea, because of Pyeongchang to 38 parallel North Korea is uh, less than 50 miles, as you said, you know, from uh, Seoul to you know, Pyongyang is uh, 75 miles, whatever, something like that. But South Korean didn't listen mm. my offer. But luckily, I really appreciate for a North Korean uh, uh, people, even if they open gate to mm -hmm. send them over to North Korea. That was a huge, big uh, step moving into peace talk. It was major. It was certainly major. And we saw during those Winter Olympics how the North and South marched under the same flag, which had, no one even conceived of that. But your fourth, your fourth recommendation, and this one is self-explanatory, is to bring in more industrial development, economic development into North Korea. And unfortunately, I'd like to go into that, but I think it's self-explanatory, but we are out of time, but this has been a very interesting conversation and we need to look at different ways to bring peace to the Korean Peninsula. And we should rule out any type of nuclear exchange because everybody will lose if that happens. But Dr. Kwang So, I wanna thank you so very much for a very interesting and a very informative program. Thank you very much Thank you. for having me. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Bill Miller. Thank you for joining us today on Global Connections Television.